Hi, everybody. It's good to see you. <clears throat> it's delightful to see you. And in our rugged environment here, we want to talk to you about something that's very precious, more precious than anything else on the earth, and that's sex. Uh, in a lot of churches, the pastors haven't talked about sex as they should, and uh, in a lot of homes, they haven't talked about sex as they should. And in this series that I call 50 Things That God Said About Sex, it's imperative that we let the American people uh, and, and the church people know that God has something to say about sex. And if the courts of our land and the judges of our land decide differently, they are in direct rebellion against God. Now, that's bad. And that is really bad. And they better know it because they will be judged for the kind of decisions that they're making. They are involving immortal souls. Our tremendous and colossal divorce rate in this country is tearing the nation to pieces. And we must pray that God will put the nation back together again. Uh, in our lessons that we have already uh, studied together, the sex drive, what is it? You know, it's, 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 it's normal. God made it. It's divine. It's holy. And uh, it's inspiring. And, and God did it. It's not to be hidden and it's not to be made fun of. Uh, it is to be appreciated uh, spiritually. Why is God so protective about sex? For one reason. Not that He wants to deny you a joy, but it's because from the sex act there comes the immortal soul. Well, you can't leave a thing like that open for any kind of game to be played. When you're dealing with souls, one person is worth the entire earth. The Bible says one soul is worth the whole world. And, and so you just must have some circumstances around it that guard uh, against the misuse of sex. X-rated marriages. There are a lot of them around. People marrying the wrong people. And they began wrong. It's got to end bad. They began wrong. Sex and divorce. Uh, that's what it's all about. You run away from one another, and, and you, don't, you don't have the love that we had one for the other. Today's lesson is, is lesson number seven, and it's called The Deceptions of Sex. Sex can fool you. <laughs> uh, yes, that's right. You can think that sex is the answer to a lot of problems, and you soon find out it's, it's not an answer to a problem at all. It's another problem. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 11, we read these words. Nevertheless, neither is the man without the woman, neither the woman without the man in the Lord. For as the woman is of the man, even so is the man also by the woman, but all things of God. God is trying to show you here that when He created Adam and Eve, they truly became one, and they became of one another. They belong to one another. They are together. And that what God is bound together, no one is to break asunder. God wants us to live together and love together. Down through the centuries, at from the beginning of the times, Satan has tried to defile God's people through the use of illicit sex. I mean, from the book of Genesis to the book of Revelation. Many have been deceived in the area of sex. They says, I want a little extra joy. I want a little extra excitement. And, and it comes up a nightmare. It's not excitement at all. It, it comes up an awful situation, a blur and a blunder. <laughs> and it's, it's not what they thought it was going to be. And any time you step out on your wife or your husband, it's not the happiness you think it's going to be. It's remorse and it's, and it's, and it's uh, sadness and it's dejection. And, and it is not what you think it's going to be. There are deceptions that you can be deceived in the area of sex, and we might as well know that. I believe the, uh, the first thought we should give in this area is sex is not to be worshipped. Now, there are some parts of the world uh, where, where sex is worshipped. Uh, even uh, way back in 2,000 years ago with Diana of, of the Ephesians, if you've ever seen uh, some of her uh, statues, she has about 12 breasts. You know, from way up here, just sets of breast all the way down. And, 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 and in Ephesus, I have been to the old temple there, and right next to it was the harlot's den. I mean, adjacent to the temple was a place of the harlots. And so religion was very closely related with sex, and illicit sex at that. And, and so uh, and, uh, 
Heathen religions have, have very often uh, been involved in, in, in sex. And uh, we, we have been to heathen temples, even in Calcutta, India, the, the goddess Kala, uh, Kali, C-A-L-I, uh, that Calcutta is named after. Uh, you go out there and they slit a goat's throat and let the blood run under, under the idol, and they, they claim that they can cause a woman to, to conceive and, 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 uh, and, and, and so forth. And you find that the religion is very closely related to the sex, to the sex act. Sex is not to be worshipped. Sex is not a god. Uh, sex is a servant, is a servant uh, that, that creates unity in the home and happiness in the home and blessedness in the home. And more than that, it creates a new generation that when you're old and gone, you have children and grandchildren that come walking behind you in the steps of time and, and you are part of the grand procession toward a glorious eternity to live forever with God. Abraham in heaven must be watching from generation after generation of what happened to him through Sarah, you see? Uh, and, uh, and so it is, is certainly a beautiful thing. But the, the object of sex must never be worshipped. Uh, and when it is, it will be a deception. It'll never be fulfilling. It'll never be satisfying. It'll never give you what you think you should have. We can be deceived uh, re related to the, the purposes of sex. In Matthew's Gospel 24 and 37, it says, As in the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days of Noah, they were before the flood, uh, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall it be in the day of the coming of the Son of Man. And, and so they didn't know the purposes of sex. To them, sex was a party. It says marrying and giving in marriage. I've told you consistently in this series that all the bad things that we have with us today are in the book of Genesis. <laughs> Uh, man didn't go far before he went bad. <clears throat> we have the same old devil that then was, now is, hurting people, causing them to go astray, causing them to lose God and to lose happiness in their hearts. Oh, neighbor, the best thing to do is to love Jesus and to serve Jesus and to go to heaven. It is the best thing to do. We don't want to be uh, deceived regarding the purpose of sex that it is not for marrying and giving in marriage and divorcing and for, and, and, and for excitement. It's for producing a generation to follow after us. And in doing it, God is an extra thing, gives us the joy of it. And it does something to our whole total personality, our spirit and parts of our soul, which is our mind, our emotions, and our will, and also to our bodies. It, has a, it, it, it moves in the three dimensions of the human being and, uh, and has fulfillment. Many are deceived in the area of sex deviation, that, they, that the normal sex doesn't satisfy them, and they go into deviation of all kinds of, uh, of, uh, of, of deviated sex, and, and there are whole books on the dirty subject that you should never read. God help you. You should, never you should never investigate them. You don't have to buy a book on how to do sex. You don't have to teach a duck how to swim. Uh, a duck can swim. Just give them the water. And you don't have to teach a human how to have sex. Uh, it comes very natural, and you don't, they don't need any teaching on it. And you don't need to buy a whole book on the positions of sex and, and, and how to have sex that is abnormal and, and, and perverted. And uh, sex belongs in the right place, in the right spot, and you better believe it. And any other way, it's wrong, and it's hurtful, and it's destroying. And I want you to believe that too. In Luke's Gospel, chapter 17, verse 28, Likewise also, as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted. They planted, mind you. They built it. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Isn't that amazing? It'll be the same all over again, God has said. They were deceived in their deviation. They thought that they could uh, have all kinds of wrong sex, man with a man, woman with a woman, all kinds of perversions along with it, and in doing so would have excitement, and all they got was death. They were deceived. Sex deceived them. They thought it was the biggest thing, and it wasn't at all. They thought it was the most fulfilling thing. It, was, it caused their death. At the bottom of the Dead Sea today are the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah because they deviated in sex. And so that was the judgment related to it, and they were deceived about the fulfillment of it. 
there was no fulfillment in it. In the book of Jude, it continues with this in verse 7, Even Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, man for man, woman for woman, are set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. God says, we want you to look at those cities. God says, now listen here. A sex de de deceived these people in its deviation. Uh, when, when they thought that it was more fun to make love man to a man and more fun for a lesbians to make love, then <clears throat> he said, now here's the whole story of it. They were destroyed for it. Some people don't believe history. They don't believe anything else. But in eternity, when you have to live with these people in hell, you'll believe it all. You say, I don't believe in hell. That doesn't hurt anything. You may not believe in Mars, but that don't move it out of the way. You may not believe the sun's going to rise tomorrow morning, but that won't hold it down. What you believe has nothing to do with the powers of history. The powers of history are moving uh, with, with the tremendous forces of the universe behind it, and they're going to accomplish. And you have to, you have to work with it. If you work against it, you only die. You only die. And so God help us to be the right kind of people. They be the people God wants us to be. There is deception related uh, to the unfulfillment of, of sex. Uh, in, in order to, uh, uh, to have sex, it should be holy. Otherwise, it's unfulfilled. I've had, oh, God only knows how many men and women have told me that they committed adultery with people, even with a harlot, and how they could have vomited. How, how, there was no fulfillment in it all. It was a lie. It was a deception. It was a, and then if they come up with some disease, then it's worse than that. It, it's, it's a horrible thing. And so the fulfillment wasn't what they thought it was going. They had a deception there. Anytime that you think that illicit sex will come up with, the, with worlds of joy, <laughs> you haven't studied history yet. You, you'll have to study some history. You're going to find out that they that participated in this kind of thing had sorrows manifold, and they had disappointments manifold. Uh, deceived regarding sex deviation. Now, it is so. Deceived regarding unfulfillment of sex. Uh, in order to enjoy sex, you should know one another. Sex is more than, in, uh, than, than just the sex act. You should know one another. In order to have fulfillment in sex, uh, you should love one another. Not just any piece of machinery that you pick up along the way in a piece of human flesh. That is not fulfillment. In Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 13, it says, If any man take a wife and go in unto her and hate her and give occasions of a speech against her and bring up an evil upon her name and say, I took this woman and, and, and I found her not to be a maiden, uh, then shall the father of the damsel and his mother take and bring forth the tokens of the damsel's virginity and, and, and under the elders of the city and the gate and the damsel's father shall say to the elders, I, have, I gave my daughter uh, to this man, the wife, and he hateth her, and lo, I have, I, I, have, I have given occasion of speech against her, saying, I found not thy daughter a maiden, and yet these are the tokens of my daughter's virginity. And they shall sp spread the garment of the cloth before the elders of the city, and the elders of that city shall take that man and chastise him, and they shall cause him to pay a hundred, and, a, a hundred shekels of silver, which would uh, be a tremendous amount of money, uh, and, and give them unto the father as a recompense to the father, of the damsel, because he had brought an evil upon a uh, name upon the virgin of Israel, he shall be his, she shall be his wife, and he may not put her away all the days of his life. Unfulfillment in sex. When a man has the wrong ideas for getting married, and then he finds out he's married and he tells a lie on his wife, God's judgment will follow that. We may not be able to pursue it like they did in the Bible here, but God pursues it. God is a still God that He was then. He hasn't changed at all. Everything that God loved then, He loved now. Everything that God hated then, He hates now. God does not change. Neighbors, believe that and walk close to God. There are deceptions in, in what we call multiple mating. There's some people that cannot confine themselves to one person. Uh, and and uh, it becomes a, a disillusionment. It becomes a deception. Uh, the first uh, record of polygamy uh, in history is in Genesis. <laughs> uh, Genesis has everything. In Genesis chapter 4, verse 23, and, and Lamech said unto his wives, Ada and Zillah, uh, Hear my voice, ye wives of Lamech, 
uh, hearken unto my speech, for I have slain a man to my wounding, a young man to my hurt. If Cain should be avenged sevenfold, truly Lamech, seventy and sevenfold. Uh, here was a man already in multiple mating, and he was only into the fourth chapter of Genesis. It, it took two chapters to get the creation going, and in two more chapters, uh, along before the flood came, they were already multiple mating, a man grabbing two women. And, and uh, it is not a, a happy thing. Uh, no woman wants to be a part of half of a love, and no man wants to be part of a half of a love. Uh, and, and you think you're going to get more out of it, it becomes a deception. Now, I have known hundreds of people that had two wives and three wives and, and, and living like that. I've never met one yet that was happy. I've never met one in the world, in, and I've seen hundreds of them around the world. I had them in my church in Hong Kong. I had them in my church in Manila. And, and they were not happy. They had to clean up their lives. They had to. And, and, and to make a change. Our, our God would not give them fulfillment within their spirits. It was a thing that had to be. Multiple mating is out of the will of God. One man to one woman, one woman for one man. And multiple mating can only cause you troubles and sorrows, heartaches and tears and disillusionment. Believe me, please, and I'll thank you for it. In the, in the future, there's going to be more of it. In Isaiah 4 and 1, it says, In that day, that's the day of the great tribulation that's soon upon us, in that day, seven women will take hold of one man and say, we'll eat our own bread. You know, uh, we'll do our own work. And we'll wear our own apparel. You won't have to buy us a thing. You won't have to buy us a thing. Only let me be called by your name. I don't want to just be a, a girl without a husband. I want to be the wife of Mr. So-and-so over here. And take away our reproach. There will be seven women holding on to one man. You say, how in the world could that be? One more war could do it. Just, just wash out the men, and you've got so many more of the women. And, and finally, they're going to say, listen here. Uh, all I want is a child. Take away my reproach. Give me a child. Lay with me. Give me a child. I'll eat my own bread. I'll wear my own clothes. I'll even give you money for it. Pay you for it. All I want to do is to have a child to take away my reproach and to be called a missus. And there's... And there is unfulfillment there, and you better believe it. Deception of the multiple mating. It has been in the past. It's going to be more in the future. In the contamination of the bloodstream, uh, there is also uh, unfulfillment. In the book of Genesis, chapter 28, it says, And Esau, seeing the daughters of Canaan, pleased not Isaac his father, then went Esau unto Ishmael and took unto the wives which he had, Mahalah, the daughter of Ishmael, Abraham's son, the sister of Debajuk, to be his wife. When this boy Esau saw that his father did not want him to marry the uncircumcised people and, and did not want him to marry the people that didn't know God and, and weren't living for God, when he saw that his father didn't want him to marry, he went deliberately and found those people and intermarried with them and did it. And he thought that he would find fulfillment. You do not find spiritual fulfillment. You do not find it in contaminated bloodstreams. You can run out and say, my father, my mother, don't need to marry him. He's a foreigner or he's of another race or something. I'll do it anyway. And in doing it, you don't produce what you are. Now, the Bible says produce after your kind. If you're Chinese, produce Chinese. And the Bible says produce after your own kind. Now, I didn't put that in the Bible. I have nothing to do with it. That's only what the Bible says. I think all the races are beautiful and all of them are beautiful. And I, I hope in eternity we keep them because they're so lovely. And, and so there's nothing wrong with it. Only the Bible says produce after your own kind. And if you reach out to change a bloodstream, uh, you might find yourself in problem with God. God made everybody like they are for purposes and reasons. And it's none of your business. Only don't defile it, don't contaminate it, and don't destroy it. And God will be pleased with that. Uh, we find that his action brought great division into the family when he did that. And, and that, that uh, problem continues until this day with the Arabs and the Jews. And no doubt many young people today marry for spite, for real spite, and therefore live lives of eternal regret. I'll marry him because my mama don't want me to. 
<laughs> yeah, and you can and you can be very sad for a lot of a lot of years and a lot of tears, and and so please don't do it. Now, uh, the deceptions of sex uh, are, are very apparent. For example, the, the the doctrine of Balaam was the contamination of the bloodstream. Abraham refused. Uh, to contaminate his bloodstream. And Ezekiel and, and Genesis chapter 24, God says, And I will make thee swear by the Lord, the God of heaven, the God of the earth, that thou shalt not take a wife unto my son of the daughters of the Canaanites, among whom I dwell, but thou shalt go into my country, to my kindred, and take a wife to my son Isaac. He said, I refuse to, 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 to intermarry with those that don't serve Jehovah, that don't know what goodness and righteousness and they don't know anything about it. And I won't contaminate myself and destroy myself spiritually and morally with that. Isaac refused the same thing. In Genesis 28 and 1, he says, Isaac called Jacob and blessed him and charged him and said unto him, Thou shalt not take a wife of the, of the daughters of Canaan. He says, don't do it. You go over into the, in, into the people that I came from that worship Jehovah and that worship the true and living God and not idols. And, and there you shall find a wife. When Israel was in its final stage of their journey from the wilderness right into the promised land, they met this strange person called Balaam. He was a prophet, a weird one. And he came to curse Israel. And he sought to defile the people of Israel. And he couldn't do it by a direct curse. And so he began to do it through immoral and heathen women. And so he caused them to do this. Away in the book of Revelation, at 2 and 14, it says, But a few things I have against thee because... because uh, there is those that hold the doctrine of Balaam and taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed unto idols, and to commit fornication. <laughs> His strategy was, I can't curse them, so I will deceive them in the strange flesh. Uh, I believe that Christians should marry Christians. I believe that godly people should marry godly people. And if you don't, you will certainly have your problems. In Numbers uh, 31 and 15, it says, Moses said unto them, Have ye saved all the women alive? Behold, uh, these caused the children of Israel through the counsel of Balaam uh, to, commit, to commit trespass against the Lord in the matter of Peor, and there was a plague among them that God sent judgment upon them uh, because they transgressed in this way and intermarried themselves with people that had no love for God, no respect for God, no respect for holiness. Uh, moral virtues didn't mean anything. And with God... They just happen to mean a lot. Also, this goes into the Bible and calls itself the doctrine of Jezebel. Uh, she got into Israel through the back door. Uh, she was a heathen and got married to one of the kings of Israel and brought all of her dirt along with her, all of her sins along with her. Uh, Jezebel and Ahab uh, in intermarried, and through this intermarried marriage, the heathen uh, became part of the, of the problem of Israel. And this is true today. Uh, you, you intermarry with sinners, and you've got your problem. You say, what are the penalties of such sins? Deformed bodies, insane minds, strange lusts, unsatisfying sexual desires, possessions of evil, and a slave to sex. Please, I, my neighbor friend, do not become, do not become so involved. Please don't, because God loves purity, God loves holiness, and God wants you to walk in it. I hope the deceptions of sex in this way helps you to walk the right way and to do the right thing. Lord, bless my neighbor. I say these things in the fear of God. I say them because they're right. Help America to have good families. Help parents to talk to their boys and girls more about sex and not be ashamed of it, that it is holy and it is pure and it is right, and they are the ones to teach. So help them, we pray, in Jesus' name, and we thank you. Amen.